Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second. We're going to uh, wait for a couple more people to join on and then we'll begin. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, good morning or good afternoon. Um, my name is Lisa, I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Mighty Cause, um, and welcome to the Fundraising Strategies a webinar for Give Back Tahoe Giving Season. As I noted, I am the Community Engagement here, Manager here at Mighty Cause, uh, and we have a lot to get through today. Um, so we're gonna be focusing on fundraising strategies for the Give Back Tahoe Giving season. Um, I'll be going through that in just a second. I'll first be going over some platform basics on the platform for those of you who missed our first webinar. Just some quick refreshers to um, remind yourself um, for your Give Back Tahoe campaign. At the very end, I'll be answering any questions anyone has. So feel free to use the GoToWebinar control panel on the right hand side. There's a questions area. Um, write in all the questions you have. And of course, this webinar will also be provided in the toolkit after it's completed, so you'll be able to revisit it. So let's go um, and talk about some of the platform basics, things that you should keep in mind for this year's Give Back Tahoe giving season. So first, the giving season this year is going to be from December 1st to December 15th. That's gonna be the time frame in which you want to um, raise your uh, donations. Registration for Give Back to Who does end this week. So you wanna make sure that if you haven't done so, you've registered your nonprofit for this year's uh, giving season. Uh, and of course, you've also, if you're new to the platform, you wanna make sure that you've been set up as an administrator, if you're a returning nonprofit, you want to make sure that you've added anyone else that needs administrative access to your organization profile. Uh, something that's been updated since last year is your organization dashboard, which is located on your organization profile. This is where you're going to have access to all of your key reporting and managing tools for your nonprofit. Um, and it's broken down into a couple of key areas, which is overview, fundraising, reports, and settings. Um, and again, if you want a more comprehensive breakdown, please check out the first webinar we did of, um, about getting started for Give Back to Ho, and we break down each of these areas and go through them in more detail. If you are new to the platform and you're just getting started, one of the best things to do is to complete your to-do list, which is found on your overview section within your organization dashboard. Uh, this to-do list will break down a really important steps for your organization to complete, such as uploading your logo, adding a background image, adding a story or a description to your profile, building your thank you page and signing up for direct deposit. Um, again, the to-do list can be found at the very top of the overview section on your organization dashboard. Um, and it will check off as you complete each of these steps. Um, these are not required action items, but we just highly recommend it so that you can learn more about the platform and get used to how to utilize it. Some of the action items on the to-do list um, are going to help you complete and customize your profile. So for new nonprofits, your organization profile is most likely going to be your primary page of where you're going to send donors and supporters. It's going to be where you're going to be collecting your donations. So you wanna start thinking about um, how you wanna portray your nonprofit on your organization profile. Um, and we're gonna actually talk a little bit more about that um, throughout this webinar. For returning nonprofits, you wanna start thinking about what changes you wanna make, as well as what story you wanna share. Um, you know, your about section on your organization profile can be very similar to the about section um, on your website. However, this is a really great opportunity to share more information about your nonprofit. And again, I'll get to, we're gonna 
talk more about that uh, in a couple of slides. Some quick reminders for uh, returning nonprofits. Um, you want to make sure that you're previewing your checkout flow and resetting your metrics. Your checkout flow, which is found in the fundraising section of your organization dashboard, has to do with the checkout form donors will see. Um, so you want to make sure that you're reviewing the information that you have there, seeing if the suggested donations or description fits your campaign this year, and as well making sure that the language for your thank you page and your thank you message, which is the message that shows up on the tax receipt, uh, is updated and correct for this year's campaign. As well, on your organization profile, you also want to make sure that you're resetting your metrics to only count donations that are going to count for this year's giving season. So you want to make sure that you update your metrics to December 1st. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do any of these action items, Again, the um, Getting Started webinar will break all of those down as well. Feel free to contact our support team and we're more than happy to help guide you through that process. Um, and the last uh, area that you should um, check out and be familiar with is your volunteer tool available also on the fundraising section of your dashboard. Your volunteer tool will allow you to post volunteer opportunities on your organization profile. Uh, you can add any qualifications and information in regards to the volunteer position you are looking for. And your volunteer uh, tool will allow individuals to register on your organization profile and provide you that information on all your registries um, and send them reminders, emails, et cetera, in regards to their volunteer opportunity. And again, uh, the volunteer tool can be found in the fundraising section of your dashboard. All right, so now that we've gone through all of some, you know, the refreshers of key elements of your organization dashboard that you'll want to utilize, uh, we're going to talk about the strategic elements of your campaign. Um, and of course, with any fundraising strategy, you first want to make sure that you have a goal set in place to figure out what strategies your organization wants to utilize, what makes sense for your organization. So you want to make sure that you're setting a, a good goal for your campaign this year. Um, and one of the best ways of setting a goal for your organization is using the SMART goal method, which is setting a goal that's specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. Um, so you want to make sure when you're thinking about setting a goal for your organization that you're not setting a goal that is broad or vague, such as raising money or engaging your donors, right? Uh, because that's not really an attainable goal for your nonprofit. It's hard to create action items to do in order to achieve that goal. Uh, so here are a couple of examples of SMART goals to create. Maybe you want to retain 40% of donors from your 2019 Give Back Tahoe campaign. Or maybe you want to increase your total amount raised by $5,000. Again, you want to make sure that they're very specific to your nonprofit. And when you're setting these goals, you want to make sure that they're actually realistic and achievable. In the last slide, I gave that example of increasing you know, your total raise by $5,000. For some nonprofits, that's incredibly unrealistic, you know, and maybe a more appropriate goal for your nonprofit is raising your total raise by 500. Um, so you want to make sure that you're creating a goal that is actually realistic for your nonprofit to achieve. Um, and the way to also think about a goal or figuring out the correct goal to create is to look at your st stats and to review your analytics. Go on to your Give Back Tahoe campaign um, from last year, see your results, see how many total donations you received, how many total unique donors, your retention rate, 
Um, and again, focus on setting goals that are actually meaningful for your organization and not a goal just for the sake of attending, um, of creating a goal. And what's gonna be really helpful for your organization in 2021. Some of the goals that we've gone through so far are very monetary based, right? They're about increasing your total raise. However, um, when you're also setting your goals, think about goals that are non-monetary based. Um, and you can think outside of the box when it comes to non-monetary goals, um, if that's something that's going to be hard for your organization to meet. So maybe a goal is to have more people participate with peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or increasing your number of guests through online channels. Um, it could be also as simple as securing your first matching grant or having your board of directors engage for the first time with Give Back Tahoe. There's a lot of different types of goals that you can set for your nonprofit. And so why are setting these goals also really beneficial and helpful for your organization outside of just working towards achieving it? Well, it's also a great way to share with your donors to let them know and your supporters how you guys are meeting your goals, what you're able to achieve when you do, are able to achieve them. Once you've set a couple of key overall goals that you have for your nonprofit, think about smaller mini goals that you can create that helps you get to the big overall goal um, because that's going to really help set a clear path for you to achieving those. Um, again, as I just mentioned, this is a really great opportunity to share with your donors how you're doing. Maybe you, um, again, have received your first matching grant. That's a really great thing to share with your donors on social media and your email that, oh, this year our organization has received a matching grant for the first time. Um, you know, help us make a larger impact this year. And of course, with these goals, you're going to be generating more excitement and building more interest for your organization. Um, I briefly mentioned donor retention as an example of a goal that your organization can set for yourself for this year. Um, and donors who have given previously in the past are highly likely to give again to your nonprofit because those donors have already made a donation to your organization. They're somewhat familiar with your nonprofit. They've gone through that barrier and pain point of actually making a donation. So of course they're more likely to give again. So donor retention is a really great tool and goal to um, set up and utilize for your organization. So set a specific donor retention goal and make sure to also wrap that donor retention into your overall goals for your Give Back Tahoe campaign. We have a donor retention report available on your organization dashboard. It is available in the report section of your dashboard. And this is a really great tool for uh, returning nonprofits because it's going to provide you information on all of the donors that you've retained year over year. So you can actually create a report of all of the donors that you haven't retained this year to date. And that's a really great list of people to begin contacting. And we'll also talk about this in the marketing portion of this webinar of great segments to create. And this is one group of people that you should definitely be targeting for your 2020 Give Back Tahoe campaign, all of those donors that you haven't retained this year yet. Again, your donor retention report is available in the report section of your organization dashboard. So once you've set up your overall goals for your events and your mini goals, you're gonna wanna think of the different strategies um, to set up and create in order to achieve those goals. And a very common strategy that nonprofits utilize our matching grants. So what is a matching grant? And that's actually a pretty common question that we're, we receive, what is a matching grant? Well, a matching grant is a marketing tool that helps motivate donors to give immediately because they know that their dollar is going to double and their donation is gonna go even farther. Um, matching grants typically are provided before your campaign so that you can market it, 
and donors know that the impact they're making is, um, you know, their dollar is going to go further and they can be used strategically to meet your fundraising goals. Um, so why set up a matching grant, right? What are the benefits of setting up a matching grant? As I mentioned, they act as a buy one, get one deal to inspire donors, right? So if you are a donor, maybe you are already decided that you're going to donate $10 to an organization. If you see that your dollar is gonna go even further, you may just decide to increase your donation amount because you know the impact is going to be greater for the nonprofit. And you also want to help support them meet their match goal. Um, it also is a different opportunity for some of your donors to uh, participate with your organization. It's a really great stewardship opportunity. If there is a large donor that has donated previously to your organization, or if there is uh, someone within your network that wants to support your organization in a different way, providing a grant is a really new and different way that someone can help support your organization. Um, and as well, having a matching grant is also a great opportunity to leverage any uh, leaderboards or challenges your organization has during the giving season. So also a very common question that we get asked at our team is, who do I go to for a matching grant? Um, I don't know a company or I don't have a contact that, of someone who would provide me a matching grant. Um, and that is, um, it, a matching grant doesn't have to be provided by a large corporation um, or a large business. It actually can be whoever. There are really no rules when it comes to a matching grant. So a matching grant can be a board member, a trustee. Um, you know, for some boards, they have a certain amount that they must donate to the organization a year. Um, and I've seen instances where the board comes together um, and pulls together a match for their nonprofit. As I mentioned previously before, a matching grant can be provided by a major donor. Maybe there's a donor that donates once a year a large donation amount. This could be an opportunity to use that donation amount in a different way that's going to be even more impactful. Uh, if there are partners or any sponsors that you've worked with in the past, this is also a really great opportunity, again, for them to support your organization in a different way and for it to be more impactful. And there's also the ability for your volunteers, your staff, anyone who wants to pool money together, uh, they can do so. And one of the, um, I think, common things that also I hear from nonprofits is that a matching grant has to be a large amount. Um, and that's not the case at all. A matching grant does not have to be $5,000, doesn't have to be $10,000, doesn't even have to be $1,000. A matching grant can be as small as $100, right? It's, a, it's just a marketing tool to share with donors that their donation is going to make a larger impact. So how do you secure a matching grant, right? We've talked about some of the people to reach out to. I mean, now you kind of want to pull it all together. So you want to prospect, outreach, and ask. So write down a list of all of the potential people that you could reach out to in regards to a matching grant. Um, we've listed a lot of different types of individuals that could potentially be great um, grantors for your organization. So write down that list um, and think of who will be most likely to provide a grant. Um, the next step is to outreach. Speak to those individuals. Um, and since this is a very specific and unique ask, make it personal. If possible, reach out to them personally, one-on-one, -on -one, um, send them a personal email, or send them, a, you know, if possible, call them. And explain to them about your Give Back Tahoe campaign, the goals that you've set up for your nonprofit, and how this matching grant can help achieve the goal that you've set up for your nonprofit. Um, and then the last step is that ask. Um, and for some grantors, they may not know what a matching grant is, and this is your opportunity to explain what a matching grant is and how 
they can be involved with your nonprofit for this year's campaign. So once you've secured your matching grant, you've spoken to your grantor, you want to set up your matching grant. And as I said, you want to make sure that you're setting this up before your matching grant um, is active, so before the giving season. Um, so to create a matching grant, you want to go to the matching grants tool on the platform. And this can be found in the fundraising section of your organization dashboard. The match tool allows you to add a logo if you are working with a sponsor or a business, um, and then provide all of the information on the match that you want to set, such as the start date and time, um, choose the match type, um, and any conditions that you also want to add to your match. The example that we've been speaking about is a standard one-to-one -one match. Any dollar you receive, you're being matched a dollar. However, there's a, a, other types of matches that you can create through the platform. Um, for example, maybe you want to create a match where a match is met when a donation amount or you've met a certain number of donations. Um, so there are different types of matches you can set. If you have any questions about matching grants, please reach out to our support team and we're more than helpful, we're more than happy to help guide you in regards to setting it up based off your agreed upon terms with the grantor. When you've set up your match, and you've set up the start time to become live at a certain date or time, a sticker is going to be added to your organization dashboard that's going to tell donors that you currently have a match live on the platform. As well, at the very bottom of your profile, there's going to be information about that match, such as if you've provided the grantor's name, who it's sponsored by, and how much you have left of your grant. Um, so donors can always see that information on your profile. Additionally, we do have a filter within our search that allows donors to search any organization that has a match currently live. So if a donor wants you know, their donation to be have a larger impact and they wanna see any organization that has currently a matching grant live, if you have your match live, your organization will show up in the search with that filter on. So a couple of common um, questions that we get with matching grants to go over really quickly. Does the matching grant have to be processed online? Um, technically, no. We The matching grants tool is a reporting and display tool. It's there for you to be able to receive donations and know which donations are going to be counted towards your match. How the grantor chooses to fulfill their match is up to you, the organization, and the grantor. Um, there are some grantors that prefer to pay check, um, and that's fine. However, one thing to know is that the challenge season um, for leaderboards and prizes, offline donations do not count. So if you want that match, to count towards your leaderboard and to count towards any prizes, then you wanna make sure that the grantor is fulfilling their donation online through the platform. Um, and as well, when you are setting up your match, there is an option that says to include match value and metrics or to not include match value and metrics. Um, and when you get to that step, you wanna make sure that you know how your grantor is planning on fulfilling their match online. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to a support team or more than happy to help guide you based off you know, how you've decided to set up your match. Do donations made to peer-to-peer -to -peer or fundraising pages count towards the match? Uh, so this is totally your choice. This is actually one of the conditions that you can set up when you create your match. Um, you can set it up where if you set up a match on your organization profile, it can count towards any fundraiser uh, connected to your nonprofit. So that's really dependent on you. And a lot of these questions as well are really dependent on what your nonprofit prefers or how you've decided you want it to work. 
Can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? Yes. If your organization is fortunate enough to receive more than one matching grant, yes, you can definitely set more than one at a time. As well, if you don't only want one at a time, but you want it to go one right after the other, you can also set up your matching grants uh, to immediately go one after the other. So once one is fulfilled, the next one starts. The next one is fulfilled, the other one starts. So again, it's just preference on how your organization prefers to set up your match on the platform. Oh no, I entered my matching grant wrong. What did I do? Okay, well, if your match is currently live, you can always edit your match. Um, the only thing you're not able to edit is the start date, but everything else, any conditions or types that you've set up, you can still edit on your match. Um, if you need to delete it, you can go ahead and stop it and contact our support team and we can help remove the matching grant from your history. If the grant has already closed, either you manually closed it or it automatically closed and you need it deleted. Also, please contact our support team and we can help delete that match from your history. So once you've set up your match, it's currently live or it's about to be live, you want to make sure that you're communicating that you have a matching grant to your nonprofits. So before Give Back Tahoe, make sure to promote it in your emails when you're talking about your Give Back Tahoe campaign. Um, you wanna tell them that you have a matching grant, that their donation can make a larger impact, and also share this information on social media. Um, when, you when your match is live, notify people on social media so that they're aware that they can make a donation right now. Um, and also send out emails when a matching grant is scheduled to become active, right? So you want to, if you're starting your matching grant on December 1st, you wanna notify people that starting December 1st, their donation is going to double or whatever you've set your match to, to be. Okay, so now that we've spoken about one type of fundraising strategy, which is matching grants, we're gonna jump into another common fundraising strategy, which is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So what is exactly peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Where it's a technique that allows a nonprofit to leverage existing supporters to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser and ask their social network for donations, right? So it's having someone in your network create a fundraiser, and by that individual creating a fundraiser, they're asking their friends and family to donate to your nonprofit. So you're getting new donors that you might not have been able to access before. So why would someone be interested in starting a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? Like what is in it for the participants? Well, it's again a different way for someone to participate and volunteer for your organization. Um, a lot of times different people are looking in different ways to support your organization, especially now, you know, some people may not have the funds to donate um, as they would have before. So this is a different way that someone can participate and help your nonprofit. Um, as I said, this is a non-monetary ask. So asking someone to fundraise for your organization is a different ask than maybe you would have asked an individual before. And one of the most, I think, important aspects of this that can sometimes be easily overlooked is that this is an opportunity for people to share with other people why your work is important to them. Why would they want to fundraise for your nonprofit? Why do they make their first donation to your nonprofit? What about your mission is really important for their community or for their um, own personal beliefs. So who would be really great peer-to-peer -peer participants? Who would be interested? Well, the people that would be, you know, interested in creating a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser or people that are in your nonprofit's inner circle. So you wanna start off with your board members, any volunteers that you have, staff members, if you do have a program, program alumni, social media followers, anyone that's currently already engaged with your nonprofit, 
those are going to be the best people that are going to be willing and open to fundraise for your nonprofit. And of course, when setting up a peer to peer fundraiser, you want to make it easy, right? You don't want to make it that your ask is something that's really complicated and hard to do. So we have resources available for organizers and for participants, you know, utilize those resources and create your own resources to help participants along the way in regards to their fundraising. Um, if possible also, um, you know, if your organization is able to, incentives are also a really easy and great way to have people participate in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. That could be um, providing a sticker or a t-shirt or anything that would encourage someone or make them interested in participating in a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. So the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool on our platform that you may want to consider utilizing if you are planning on creating a peer-to-peer -peer campaign is our team fundraising tool um, or a team fundraising page. This team fundraising page allows you to build a campaign where individuals can have their own fundraising page while being part of a larger fundraising page called a team fundraising page, um, allowing individuals to work together towards a collective fundraising goal. So this is really great for groups that are interested in fundraising together, such as board of directors, staff, companies, volunteers, it could be something as, you know, um, just a general group of people. I've seen a group of pedicabbers in the Boston area come together to create a team fundraising page for a local nonprofit. Um, and creating a team fundraising page generates more interest, interest because it makes it a group effort, right? Everyone has their own goals, but overall, there's a collective goal that we're trying to reach. Um, and as you see in the example in the right-hand side, uh, there's a leaderboard available that will um, list all your participants, and you can either make, rank this by dollars raised, or you can simply rank it by name if you want, if you don't wanna make it competitive. And then when you select on that individual, it lands you to their fundraising page where they can utilize that page to write their own story, um, and provide, again, reasons why they want to fundraise for your nonprofit, why this year is important for your nonprofit. If you have any questions about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as well, please contact our support team and we're more than happy to help guide you in regards to peer-to-peer -to -peer fundraising or how to create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. So once you've set your goal, you've decided on the strategy you wanna go by, um, you wanna now start planning your marketing and promotion for Give Back Tahoe. Um, what are you planning on doing to get the word out about your campaign this year? So the first thing to do is to always think about what is the story that you're telling this year? There's been a lot of world events to happen this year, so you wanna think about how those have impacted your nonprofit. And if you only had a few minutes to tell someone what your work means to you, what would you say? So when you're thinking about your story, you wanna make sure that it's personal um, and that it is visual because those are always the stories that are going to stand out to people and to donors. You wanna make sure that you're also going to be sharing different aspects of your story on social media and that you're tailoring the ask to your story and you're telling donors about the impact that they can make. Again, you always want to bring it back to the impact donors are making and how they can support your organization um, for you to reach this impact. So when you're thinking about your email marketing strategy, you want to make sure that the emails you're sending out are going to be short and sweet. At this time of the year, People are going to be solicited with a lot of different emails. You know, uh, Give Back Tahoe and Giving Tuesday happens right after Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So people are gonna be inundated with a lot of emails. So you really wanna think about the language that you're using in your subject lines as well in the body of your email. So you wanna keep it short and sweet and use strong call to actions like donate now, help us today, make a large impact. 
Um, before you're sending out your emails, a really great rule of thumb is to always test your emails out, send it out to your fellow staff members, volunteers, etc. And you also want to make sure that you're just double checking what it looks like on your phone because most people do check their email on their mobile device. And of course, one of the most important aspects of your email marketing strategy is segmenting your emails. So you don't want to send out one email to everyone that's connected to your nonprofit, right? You want to make sure that the different emails you're sending out are targeted to specific groups of people. So some a couple of great examples are your past donors, right? You might want to write a specific email for your past donors, one to your volunteers and board members on how they can engage with your nonprofit this year. Maybe there's certain individuals that donated a certain amount last year that you want to reach out um, and tailor a specific ask to those people. And the beginning of the webinar, we spoke about your donor retention report and the importance of donor retention. Um, this should be a really easy list for nonprofits um, for you guys to utilize when thinking about who to target. So head over to your donation report, download a list of unretained donors, um, and tailor and ask to those people. Again, use strong language like give again. We know we can count on you to acknowledge their past donations and the impact that they can make this year. Um, so that's a really easy uh, list of people that you can access right after this webinar. When it comes to social media marketing, um, the technique is pretty similar. Uh, you want to use the hashtag give back Tahoe so that people are becoming aware that you're participating in the challenge season, what they're going to be supporting your nonprofit by, and also you're just engaging in the greater conversation in regards to Give Back Tahoe. If your organization is, um, if you have a lot of supporters that are very active on social media, that comment on your Facebook page a lot, et cetera, um, as we start getting towards the challenge season, it gets crazier and crazier for a nonprofit. So if this is something that's really gonna be hard for you to manage, consider appointing someone on your staff, a social media manager, someone who could post different um, images, et cetera, as well as manage anything that's coming through from your supporters. And this is also could be a potentially good, a volunteer opportunity that you could provide on your organization profile someone that could help just manage your social media and make sure that it's up to date and active. And of course, the biggest rule of thumb is stay in your comfort zone and go where your biggest and most engaged audience is. If your donors and supporters are not on TikTok, you are not required to use TikTok, right? If your donors and supporters are primarily on Facebook or LinkedIn, utilize those networks. You want to make sure that you're using your time efficiently and effectively. So you want to make sure that if you're creating social media posts and engaging with your audience, you're engaging with them on a network that they are going to see the information that you're posting. So what type of social media content works? Like what is going to be um, provide you with the strongest results? Well, with videos, if your organization does have a video, Facebook in particular is a really great avenue for videos. As well, consider doing a live stream on um, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, it, on Giving Tuesday, a lot of nonprofits utilize Giving Tuesday as a really great day to do a live stream as they begin um, you know, accepting donations. If they've reached a goal, that's a really great opportunity. And as well, for images, use strong and striking images. Um, a lot of people assume that they have to be professional looking. They don't have to be professional. If you have an image of all of your board members, that's really great to post on social media so that people put a face to your nonprofit. If you are looking for professional photos um, for any marketing that you're doing, unsplash.com is a really great resource. I personally utilize this all the time. It is a website um, that provides photo galleries of free reusable images that you can reuse for commercial use. Um, so definitely check out unsplash.com if you do want to utilize professional looking images. Okay, so after your campaign has finished, right? 
you've done your fundraising strategies, you've done all your email marketing, um, the challenge season has ended, hopefully you've met all of your goals, there's also still a really important element to your campaign, and that happens after the event is finished, and that's following up with your donors. So you wanna make sure that you're following up with your donors because how quickly and genuinely donors are thanked for their donation predicts how likely they are to donate to your nonprofit again. Um, this is an, a great opportunity, especially with the new donors, of you starting the stewarding process and building a long lasting relationship. You know, maybe that one time or first time donor can become a volunteer in the future if you start the stewarding process immediately. Um, and as well, in general, when you are follow up with your donors and supporters, it provides them a positive experience, not only with your organization, but in general with Give Back Tahoe, right? They're gonna be more familiar with Give Back Tahoe and more likely to give to your nonprofit again. So there are a couple of different ways on how you can follow up and how you can thank your donors. Of course, you can send out an email. Um, if there is a specific you know, large donors, I would personally email them, or if possible, I would give them a call. Um, if there's anyone that's helped support your organization in different ways, again, if they provided a matching grant, if they're a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, if they volunteered to do your social media on during the um, challenge season, send them a personal thank you card, give them a call, thank them for supporting your organization. And as well, this is a good opportunity to ask survey type questions, like how did you hear about the campaign? Or why did you wanna get involved? Um, information that you can really learn from and grow in 2021. As well, um, after the event has finished, you wanna make sure that you're closing the loop on the story that you have told your donors um, for 2020 challenge season. So report your results on social media, send donors um, you know, what you've accomplished, again, the goals that you've set, what you've been able to accomplish this giving season. If you've told a particular story in your social media or your marketing, close the loop on your story, and maybe this happens a couple of weeks after the challenge season, but notify donors of any updates to a story that you've told. If you are raising money to build a building, you know, where are you in that process, etc. Um, and also when you're closing the loop, this is a really great opportunity to start planting seeds for your 2020 camp 2021 <laughs> campaign. Um, it's a great opportunity to share what your goals are for the future of your organization um, and how again their donation is going to be making an impact in 2021. If you have any questions or need any resources, the toolkit is a really great um, area to receive any um, tips, uh, FAQs, basic how-tos. There's a lot of great support articles we provide that kind of break down how to do some of this stuff. We also have a really great blog that will share with you um, some more strategic elements that you guys are looking for. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out our, to our support team. We're always here to help answer you or help guide you to the best of our ability. Um, and I'm going to now leave some time to ask, uh, answer any questions anyone has. Again, the GoToWebinar control panel will have a box for any questions um, anyone has. This webinar is also going to be provided um, after we are finished with it, so you can always go back and review the slide deck or review this uh, recorded webinar. Okay, we have a question of how do I create a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page? Uh, so. Creating it is really easy. It takes five seconds. Um, it really does. If you're, if this is something that you're kind of thinking about, but you haven't fully decided if you want to do it or not, you can go ahead and create one just to see what the process is like, how easy or difficult it's going to be. Uh, but if you're on your organization profile, there is a plus icon 
at the very top of your page, if you click on the plus icon, it will provide you different options. Um, there are two different peer-to-peer -peer fundraising pages that you can create. One is called Team, the other one is called Event. Today, I've just gone through Team because I think that's what most organizations are going to utilize. Um, so you can start a team. If you're making a larger scale peer-to-peer -peer event, um, an event would also work for you. But if you have any questions, again, you can contact us or review our support um, articles to see which one is going to work best for your campaign that you're planning on creating. So um, there's a question about matching grant start date and when it's live. So um, to clarify, so when a matching grant is live, that means the date that you've set your matching grant to start. So for example, I could create a matching grant today and I could set it to start December 1st. So I've gone ahead and created it, set it up, but it's not going to start matching until that start date that I've set. So when it's live, when that start date hits, that's when donations are going to be matched, just to clarify that aspect of it. Okay, so any final call for any last questions? I don't see any more. Um, and if that's the case, I'm going to end the webinar here. Thank you everyone for attending. I hope it was very helpful. Uh, please let us know if you have any further questions and have a great rest of your day.